little bee is getting dressed. Okay, I'm setting up for the very first trailer park picnic. I'm so excited. So this was my mom's tablecloth from the 60s. Isn't that great? Hi. Hi. Dana. Sabrina. Joseph. Dana. Hi, everybody. It's Hi. Sabrina. Hi. I'm Hi, Hi, come, Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Come under. So there's a wild blackberry pie that a, a neighbor gave, picked and yeah. gave me. And then from Maynard Farms, the nectarines in the Santa Rosa oh. plumps, the yellow nectarines in yes. Santa Rosa. So this is our, our deer milk ricotta. Ah. You're what? what? <laughs> you have milk? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I just this, this is not a Borat type of joke. <laughs> it took us all summer to catch her. We finally caught her. Moved her. Made some ricotta just for you. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> what are these? Wow. Right out the room. So, oh, feel so special. Oh, oh, oh. No, this I is know. fresh ricotta oh. Graham just made today from our milking short heart. Tomato, tomato tart. tart. So here, Joseph, if you want to tell us Joseph. about heirloom tomatoes. Heirloom tomatoes from a couple of different farmers, from Richard Gillies, from uh, Lucky Dog. I bought some in the city yesterday because I was down, actually it was on Wednesday. Um, I caramelized onions, put that on the bottom of a pre-baked pie shell. And then I crumbled some uh, chev, some fresh goat cheese from Linda. Uh, Smith over at Sherman Hill Dairies. Then arrange the tomatoes on top of that, whatever tomatoes look good. And then crumble some feta on it and then pop it under the broiler. I'm Sabrina Artel. Thank you so much for joining me for Trailer Talk. This is my 1965 Beeline Travel Trailer. And today I am at the Liberty Farmers Market in the Sullivan County Catskills for a picnic. And I'm delighted to have joining me at the kitchen table, Joseph Lennon. So Joseph, what is your interest in local food? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question. Yes. Um, I came to local food through just my love of food in general. And um, through that, I got interested in where my food was coming from. Um, then became interested in who was producing it and then wanted to produce it myself. Um, so that's my, my, I began really as an, an eater and worked my way up to a gardener. And, I'm, I'm uh, still at the eater. You know, that's a, a great place to be. And Joseph, you're one of the founders of the local chapter of Slow Food? Yeah, we started a local chapter up here not quite two years ago. A kind of interesting group of people coming from a lot of different areas. We've got a group of farmers, Sonia Hedlund from Apple Pond Farm, Trina Pilonero, um, Greg Schwartz from Willow Wisp, and then we have um, restaurant people, which I would consider myself one of. Um, a gentleman who ran, who has a wine and cheese shop in Calicoon, who used to have a restaurant in New York. And then we have a lot of weekenders and local people. And it's kind of through this group that I got to be really interested in what the farmers were doing up here. And um, after the restaurant that I was managing in the city closed about uh, a year ago, I was looking around for what I was going to do. And I thought about um, trying to work as a kind of a middleman um, for local producers trying to get their products into the city. And then that didn't really pan out because the way they speak of the middle menace was just such disdain that I thought I could never, <laughs> never do that. So it's more of working, you know, as an advocate for, um, for local products. Through the Slow Food, we're really um, trying to reach out to the community at large. Um, all of our events are free. Um, you don't have to be a member. In fact, we, you know, we don't push membership at all. It's not, I think it's a little bit expensive for a lot of people who live up in this area and I've been trying to get them to do a, a farmer rate for um, memberships, you know, that it shouldn't be the full, full mm -hmm. rate. They should do something for people who are unemployed um, or underemployed. And, uh, you know, Slow Food has taken on a much, um, much more kind of 
advocacy role for the farmer than it used to have and for good um, food that it used to be have this kind of moniker of a um, elite eating club and that's really not what we are and the group the national organization is really moving away from that so how does counter tie into all of this counter ties into it it's fantastic because it brings together all of the things that I'm passionate about um, I love the restaurant environment, the idea of hospitality, of welcoming people into to have a wonderful meal. Um, I did that for a long time at Florent, and I think I'm pretty good at it. Um, I'm interested in organic product. I'm interested in local farms. I'm interested in wine that's uh, sustainably made. And um, Counter has all of these things. And the food is so delicious. That was kind of the one, you know, every, my interviews leading up to getting the job were kind of, you know, like, I'm really excited about everybody who I'm meeting. But the thing that really threw me over the top was tasting the food. And that, you know, I thought, oh, it's a no-brainer. <laughs>